What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome to episode number 18 of The Ultimate Team. <laughs> Nearly got the name wrong there. I've just recorded audio for another commentary, so a bit confusing. So as you can see guys, at the start of the game here, we're just applying some contracts to uh, Muriel Amaro there and Freddy Guarin. They are now out of contracts and we are running low on contracts, but that's not a problem. We've got plenty of coins now. You know, we're at a stage in the this Ultimate Team project, even though we're only on number ep episode number 18, where um, we don't want for coins anymore, you know. I've got almost 20,000 coins up there. I've got two good teams to play with. I do want to improve that and get a really good team. Um, the the position I'm in now, guys, um, is a bit further on from this. And a few people in the comments section said that perhaps I shouldn't go further on and just do, you know, like when I play on the day so that you guys can be more involved. And I think that's absolutely fair um, and a very, very good thing to do. So what I'm going to do is the next sort of three or four episodes, I'm going to get up uh, and I'm not going to play any more of this series in the meantime. Uh, and then once I catch up to a point where I am on the same time as what you guys are watching, I will start getting your, you guys involvement, what players to buy, um, you know what formations to use everything basically we'll do we'll do it all to all bit together so uh i enter the game here and i've got my brazilian team and i like this brazilian team and i try to come back to skills and stuff um but it's it's stupidly hard to just think that i can go from having a year of not skilling to just being able to skill again and it's going to take time and i don't want it to take time on this account so i'm going to use a different account that i play fifa on to practice the skills again and, and get that kind of edge back with the skilling uh, and that being said this attack that i've got Wellington and rafael sobis um sobis is too slow i know he's got five star skills but he's too slow and pace is just real important in this game um however i was uh talking to r9 rai last night and he told me about a silver player called Mayuka uh, who plays for Southampton in the Premiership. And this guy is a machine. He's got 90 pace, he's got 4 star skills and a 5 star weak foot. And it got me to thinking about how important the 5 star weak foot was because um, Adel Tarapt is one of my favourite players in Ultimate Team 2013. And he's also got a 5 star weak foot and that plays an important part for me in why he's so good. So maybe people with five star weak foots are actually really overpowered because you don't have to position your body you don't have to you know if you're running through on goal you're confident that you can you can shoot at either edge and not worry what foot he uses you know you don't have to move maneuver the player to actually pick a different foot so what i'm going to do guys is actually do a video again uh, an ultimate team video it'll be a special video on the importance of five star players what i'll what i'll do is i'll build a team with five star weak foot players and um, play a gold cup and then build a tournament and build a team with maximum say three star weak foot players and make sure the teams are very similar in uh, capabilities and stuff you know 80 to 84 rated players for example and they really just give you guys an, an honest opinion as to whether or not five star weak foot players are overpowered or not but here we are in this game guys and uh, i managed to win the game 5-4 the guy had a really really good team and he was playing five at the back so that was a good win for me to pick up there uh, very impressed with that especially considering the four previous games before this or the you know four of the five previous games I'd actually lost and um, with that guy there you know I won 5-4 dominated the game you can see by the match stats there and that put us into the semi-final of the gold cup we've now got a record of 21 wins and 10 losses again not ideal but um, we're going to build on that we're going to work on that and as you can see guys I went trading again and I picked up all these players you can see how much I picked them up for there uh, Kaka for 3200 and he'll sell for 4000 Ronaldinho for 2000 and he'll, he'll only go on to sell for around 2500 maybe 2700 maximum um, but uh, they don't really sell you know the market as well guys recently and um, people have been saying it, it's crashing because uh, you know people are selling up for team of the year players and whilst that's somewhat true it's more true to the really expensive players the players are worth over a hundred thousand and such because you'll get a player that'll be worth like maybe three four hundred thousand and because people are trying to sell them off to get coins for the team of the year they're going to drop down fifty hundred thousand coins or whatever and it gives a lot of people better opportunities to buy those but these people that want those coins for team of the year have still got to use players in the game so they're going and buying the the cheaper players that the regular joes use you know the people that are worth sort of five to ten thousand coins 
And because now the demand for these cheaper players has gone up, the value and the price of the cheaper players is actually rising. So it has like it has some kind of um, reverse effect on the cheaper players because more people want them. You know, supply and demand is such that the the prices rise. So for a lot of you actually sitting there going to yourself, saying to yourselves like, you know, I thought this was supposed to be a market crash and they're actually more expensive. That's exactly the reason why. Um, I come up against another five of the back team here. He's got a really solid team again. Uh, I was a bit, I was very happy with his defence because he's got Ferdinand. Is that sorry, Smalling, Terry, and um, I can't remember the other player right there. Sorry, I, I could go back and look, but I, I just can't remember. Um, it might have been Ferdinand instead of Smalling actually. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, and Jolyon Lescott was the other centre back he had, and it, it's just a really slow defence. And uh, slow defences, I love all day long. Um, so we go uh, one nil up there, and Daniel Sturridge pulls it back for him. Daniel Sturridge has actually just currently moved to Liverpool as well, so uh, that'll be interesting to see his card in a Liverpool colour. Uh, but we do manage to get the second goal, to, well, the third goal of the game to go two one up. Eric Lamella there in the 41st minute, and he's he's been a great signing for me, and I actually want to get the uh, informed version of him for this team because I do like this team and look at the strength of Lamella there and using his left foot finesses it into the far post to make it 3-1 just a couple minutes after we uh, we went to 2-1 well a couple of minutes after the, the restart anyway and uh, I thought I was cruising a bit but that guy scores a cracking goal with uh, Ramirez there to bring himself back into the game and he makes it 3-2 and I don't want to lose this game, but uh, sometimes you don't have a choice, you know. And uh, as you saw the game come out of the pause there and Podolski showing some great strength. I don't know what my defender is doing there. I don't know what Armero is doing there, but Sturridge walks in and a, a stunning shot and it goes off the inside of the post at the near side and it was an awesome, awesome goal. Um, but I do manage to make it 4-3 and that is how it ended. Muriel scoring to win me the game. So we get a couple of wins in this episode. That's awesome stuff. And it puts us to the final now of the Gold Cup. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all the, the feedback and support I get on this. Like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.